Assalamu alaikum, my name is Joe Bradford and welcome to Inside My Library. Today we'll be talking about this book, it's an Arabic title called al Asr al-Jahiri, which translates to the pre-Islamic age of ignorance. And it's one that some of my Arab friends while I was studying would say that I was nuts for reading, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. First, if this is your first time here, I do book reviews every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe to my channel below and enable alerts to get the latest notifications. So back to this book and its author first. The author, Dr. Shoki Leif, was an Arabic literary critic and historian. He is considered one of the most influential Arabic intellectuals in the 20th century. He was born in the village of Um Hamam in northern Egypt in 1910 and he died in 2005. During his life he attended Fuad al-Awwal University, which is now known as Cairo University, and then became professor of Arabic literature at that same university for decades. He was also the president of the Academy of the Arabic Language in Cairo for a few years. Now, before he passed away, Shoki Leif would author more than 50 works in the arts and literature. His study of the development of Arabic poetry during the Umayyad Caliphate is considered one of the most important references on that topic. His magnum opus was his 100 volume History of Arabic Literature, a project that took 30 years to complete and it was an overview of all poetry and literary criticism and rhetorical studies from the pre-Islamic period to the post-Abbasid era. And this series is indispensable for students of the Arabic literature and some of the volumes have been reprinted up to 20 times. Our book today is actually just one volume of that series. So I mentioned that a few friends thought I was crazy when I bought this book to learn about Arabic and its history. And their retort was that they didn't even read these books, so why should I read them? And I said, well, maybe that's the problem. You know, learning a language is like exercise. You have to stay limber by using light weights, build stamina by using weights that are at your level, and then pick up really heavy things to build muscle and push your body to the limits. Same thing goes for learning Arabic. Read children's books to stay limber, read books on your level to build vocabulary and syntax, and read books way above your level to push the limits of what you know and what you're exposed to. If you want more information on how to do this, you can click below in the description to see the videos in this Inside My Library series about learning Arabic. So, about this book and why it's heavy lifting. It consists of 12 chapters with an intro and an epilogue. The first three chapters focus on the geography, history, and life of pre-Islamic Arabia. The next three chapters focus on the Arabic language, transmission of poetry and its recording, and the special features of Arabian poetry. Each of the next four chapters focus on one prominent figure in that period, Imra al-Qais, Nabigh al-Dubyani, Zuhair ibn Abi Salma, and al-A'sha. The last chapter speaks about groups of poets like al-Fursan or the cavalrymen, whose valiance and bravery on horseback was beyond description and who coined couplets of their battles and heroism. There was the Sa'aliq, or as I like to call them, the bands of bastards, people who were driven out by their tribes and their allegiances. There were social outcasts living on the road, subsisting on highway robbery and the like, and they would make poetry about that. Other groups were Jewish poets who were transplants in the Arabian Peninsula but mastered the language to the extent that poetry became second nature to them. Christian poets of the Northern Arabs like Adi ibn uh, Zayd as well as other cultural and religious minorities like Arabian monotheists, Hunafa or Persian transplants and several others. The cross-cultural influences that these groups experienced make them markedly different than the Bedouins and the city dwellers far from the edges of civilization. The last chapter covers Arabian prose and it focuses on three types of prose. Aphorisms, basically pithy statements that contain some type of instruction or wisdom. Speeches, usually delivered before or after a war. And the clanging of soothsayers, which in Arabic is called sajar kuhan. Those whose alliterations and rhyming words and speech was based on the association of sounds instead of meanings, meant to have a hypnotic effect on the listener. Even the Prophet ﷺ recognized this. In one incident in his life when a man spoke to him in a rhyming fashion, he said, some forms of speech are magic. Inna min al-bayani la sihra. This man has the clanging like the clanging of soothsayers. The epilogue to this book is essentially a summary of the entire book. And it gives the author's impressions of its contents after having finished it, along with a few inferences and deductions that he didn't mention in the main text. 
So this is a heavy lifting book for most of us, but it is an enjoyable read that covers the pre-Islamic age of ignorance and its literary contributions in detail. So why read this book? Well, for students of the Arabic language, it's important to understand where the language started. For students of Islamic studies, this poetry is considered the literary body that the Quran was revealed to challenge and was used in interpreting the usage of words and phrases in the Quran. For the student of history, in general, the poetry of this time was said to be the historical register of the Arabs. So all in all, it's an important time to read about an important subject, and this book covers it in detail. Thanks for watching. If you've read this book or similar titles and you think you have a better read or want to comment on this, let's hear from you below, and I'll see you next time inside my library.